All right, in this lesson, we're going to look at dot products of vectors, uh, which is pretty simple, and we use the dot product to find the angle between two vectors. Uh, so let's look at what this is. Uh oh, ah, geez, now it's not tapping. Why isn't this working? Yeah. Okay, here we go. All right. Um, okay, the dot product. If you have two vectors, u and v, uh, the formula for dot product is this thing right here. That is the formula for the dot product. Um, where u dot v, you simply multiply the a components, you multiply the b components, and you add the two products together. And a couple of examples here. Uh, let's do this product right, dot product between u and v here. So if I wanted to do u dot v, and that's how you read it, it's not u times v, it's u dot v. Um, you multiply the a coefficient, so we'll do 2 times negative 1. And then we will add to that the product of the b, I say coefficients, I meant components, the product of the b components, which are 5 and 3, and then we channel our 6th uh, grade math skills, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, 5 times 3 is 15, and negative 2 plus 15 is 13. So that is what the dot product of u and v will be, and you just get a number. So there you go, that's your dot product. Multiply the b, a's, multiply the b's, add them, and there you go. Uh, let's do a couple more examples real quick. We have u and v here, so u dot v. I'll do negative 2 times 7. And then I'll take that product and add it to the product of 8 and 3 halves. Um, now, 8 and 3 halves is a little bit tricky. It's not too bad. But I do know that 2 goes into 8 four times, so I'll cancel that, giving me uh, negative 2 times 7 is negative 14 plus... 4 times 3 is 12, which gives me a sum of negative 2. Um, and then here for this one, we have u equals 5i minus 8j and 6, or v equals just 6j. Uh, we can still do the dot product. I am going to change v instead of just 6j. I'm going to put a 0i in front so I can see both components, the i and the j component. Uh, and u dot v is going to be 5 times 6 plus negative 8 times, uh, no, not 5 times 6, 5 times 0. Whoa! Yeah, we do 5 times that 0 right there. So let me fix that. Ah, uh, jeez, where's the eraser? Okay, so it'd be 5 times 0 and negative 8 times 6. 5 times 0 is 0, negative 8 times 6 is negative 48, and 0 minus 48 is negative 48. So there's the dot product of u and v. Very, very simple stuff. Um, now the dot product is used to find other things. Uh, namely, it's used to find the angle between two vectors. Uh, so when we find the angle between two vectors, what we're actually looking at, um, like here, well, this is the formula. It's, it's the, the cosine of the angle is the dot product over, and this is the product of the magnitudes. Maybe I should um, point that out, that this is the product of the magnitudes. So you'll find the magnitude of each one and then multiply those two numbers. Um, so right here I have vectors u and v and the angle between the two vectors means um, if I were to graph the vector u it's the vector 2, 5 which means u means I'll start at some point I'll go right two units and then up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and my vector u would look like this. So there's vector u. Vector v, I will go left one unit from the same point. They share an initial point, so I'm going to go left one and then up three. So one, two, three, and there's my vector v. So let me get that one. Let's make it red. So there's vector v, and what we're looking for is the measure of the angle between those two vectors. So this angle right here is what we're trying to find. Uh, to find that angle, we will use this formula, uh, and part of that formula is the dot product, and we also need the product of the magnitudes. Um, so the dot product of u and v, u dot v, I think these are the same vectors we did earlier. It's 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2 plus 5 times 3, 
and we get a dot product of 13, but we also need their magnitudes. So the magnitude of u is going to be the square root of a squared, which is 4, plus b squared, which will be 25. So we get the square root of 29. I need the magnitude of v, which is the square root of negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus 3 squared, which is 9, and the square root of 1 plus 9 will be the square root of 10. So I have all of that information. Now I take it all, and I roll it into the formula. Oops, that was funny looking. Cosine of the angle is equal to the dot product, 13, over the product of their magnitudes, which is root 29, and root 10. Uh, make sure that that entire thing is trapped in the denominator down here. So we have those things in parentheses. And we will simply punch this in the calculator. Um, now to punch that in the calculator, if you want to solve for an angle, we are going to do the inverse cosine of all of that stuff. So uh, my answer is going to be the inverse cosine of 13 over all of this ugly stuff, and I'm going to pause this and punch it in the calculator real quick. And you have to be careful with your parentheses. Um, as I said earlier, you have to make sure that you get the root of 29 times the root of 10 in parentheses. And we'll throw that in the calculator to get our answer. So let me get that answer real quick. And when I punch that in, I got 40.236. So let's see. Is that what I said? Yeah, 40.236. And I did answer that in degrees, uh, so change your calculator to degree mode on these problems. And that does look about like an angle of 40 degrees right here. If I were to pull out a compass and measure that, or is it a protractor? Whichever one measures angles, um, you would get about 40.236, or exactly that. Uh, let's see, one more problem where you're finding the angle between two vectors. Uh, again, this one, we have u and v, we need their dot product. So u dot v, this is the same problem we did earlier. Um, there is no i component of v, so it would be 5 times 0 plus negative 8 times 6, and we have a dot product of negative 48. Then I need their magnitudes, so the magnitude of u is going to be the square root of 5 squared plus negative 8 squared, which ends up being the square root of 89. And the magnitude of v is actually going to end up being 6, but if you don't believe me, it would be the square root of, there's 0 i, so 0 squared, plus 6 squared, which is 36, and the square root of 36 is 6. And then we take all of that information, and we roll it into our formula. Cosine of the angle is the dot product, in this case negative 48, over the product of the magnitudes, which is root 89 and 6. And then we'll punch that in the calculator. Theta is going to be the inverse cosine of all of that. Negative 48 over. And I'm going to flip the order of that and say 6 through 89 just because it looks better. We'll throw that in the calculator and get our answer. So let me do that real quick. So we got 147.995 once I punch that into my calculator. And that is in degrees, so um, make sure your calculator is in degrees. It just makes more sense to see a degree angle measure. You can wrap your brain around it a little bit better. All right, uh, and then the last thing is the difference between orthogonal and parallel vectors. Um, if you remember orthogonal, we've talked about that before, but orthogonal is another word for perpendicular, and uh, parallel means having the same slope. We should know what parallel means. Uh, okay, two vectors are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. So if v dot u is zero, then they would be orthogonal. Um, two vectors are parallel if one is a constant multiple of the other. Um, so there's a couple of notes. Let me show you quickly what that means. Um, let's see. So we're looking at this. Did I ever resume recording? Yeah. All right. Um, so to determine whether these vectors are orthogonal, parallel, or neither, uh, orthogonal to me is the easiest one. So what I'm going to do to test for orthogonality, eh, I just made up that word. What I'm going to do to see if they are orthogonal is I'm going to do the dot product first. As a dot product, I'll do 2 times negative 10, which is, oh, geez, what, is, what did I just do? Uh, where's my eraser? Here it is. All right, so uh, 2 times negative 10 is negative 20 plus 5 times 4 is positive 20. 
negative 20 plus 20 is 0. Since the dot product was 0, that means, therefore, u and v are orthogonal. And I'm lazy, so I'm just going to say r orthog, but that's good enough. Um, okay, same thing for number 7. I'm going to do the dot product first, because that's pretty easy. u dot v, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 times 6 is 18 and I get 26. Okay, that is not equal to zero, so I know they're not orthogonal, but they could still be perpendicular. Um, so they're not orthogonal, and not perpendicular, but parallel. So the way I'm going to check to see if they are parallel is I want to know if one vector is a constant multiple of the other. And this one, there's two ways you can do this. Uh, this one I set up to be a little bit easier, but hopefully you can look at this and see that if I double u, if I multiply u by 2, um, 2 times 2i is 4i, 2 times 3j is 6j, um, and I notice that if I double my vector u, it actually gives me my vector v. Okay, that means v is 2 times u. If one vector is a constant multiple of the other, that means they are parallel. So V was exactly twice U. Or um, you could look at it and say U is exactly one half of V. If you multiply one half through V, you get 2I plus 3J. Uh, so that's another way you could think of it. So uh, since one is a constant multiple of the other, they are parallel. Um, let's look at number eight here. These are the last two. Um, first thing I'm going to do is the dot product. So nine times negative six, U dot V. 9 times negative 6 is, what, negative 54? And negative 12 times 8 is 96. Negative 54 minus 96 is, what, negative 150? I think that's right. Whatever it is, it's definitely not 0, which means they are not orthogonal. So now we need to wonder if they are, perpen if they are parallel. Um, now, this one's a little bit tougher to tell. Some of y'all may notice uh, these actually do end up being par parallel. And you might be able to notice that, ah, oh, geez, um, you might be able to notice that V is two-thirds of U. Now, that's kind of hard to tell by looking at it, um, but I know that 6 is two-thirds of 9, 8 is two-thirds of 12, and if you're very, very, very keen, you'll notice that V is indeed two-thirds of U, or, actually, it's negative two-thirds because their signs change. Um, so since one is a constant multiple of the other, that means they're parallel. Now, that's hard to tell, so I'm going to show you another way that you can tell whether vectors are parallel, and that's by thinking strictly in terms of slope. Uh, if you remember the, the components, 9 and negative 12 and negative 6 and 8, those components tell you how far up and down and left and right you go. So if you think of slope as rise over run, then we could actually find the slope of these two vectors. So I'm going to find the slope of u, the slope of vector u. Um, well, I go right 9, and then I go down 12. Well, rise goes on top, so if I go down 12, the slope is negative 12, and the run, I go to the right 9. Negative 12 over 9 reduces 2. Uh, they both are divisible by 3, so that's negative 4 thirds. Then I'm going to find the slope of vector v. I'm going to do the same thing. I go up 8, so my rise is 8. My run is negative 6, and 8 over negative 6 reduces to 4 over negative 3, and these two vectors have the same slope. And if two lines or two vectors have the same slope, they are parallel. And that's another way you could actually determine whether or not vectors are parallel. Um, we could actually have done that on these last two problems also. Uh, if we look at number six, if we think of slope, the slope whoops, of u, uh, I go up five and over two. So the slope of u is five halves. The slope of v, I go up four and over ten, or left ten, which reduces to negative two-fifths. And those are negative reciprocals, which means they're perpendicular. Uh, and we could do the same thing for number seven. Um, so that's another way you can determine whether or not vectors are parallel or perpendicular. Uh, last problem right here. Let's do u dot v. That'll give you 
I've got like one minute tops. I'll be done. Sorry. Um, so uh, I'll do the dot products. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. That is not equal to 0. So I know they're not perpendicular. Um, now slope, uh, it, I don't see that one is a constant multiple of the other, but what I will do just to make sure, let's find the slope of u. The slope of u is, we go up 5 and over 4, so the slope of u is 5 fourths. The slope of phi is, we go down 5 and over 4. Uh, they are not the same, and they are not negative reciprocals. And since they are not the same or negative reciprocals, then they are neither parallel nor perpendicular. And there we go. And then we'll talk about the rest of the details of this in class and do some more examples. So hopefully this will help you out.